uh, there's a few guys watching too, trying to help out their lady friends. I just wanted to um, talk to you today about keeping your aisle runner at your wedding in place. Uh, especially if you're having your wedding outside, you need a way to hold your aisle runner in place in case it's windy. Because nobody can tell the future and know if there's going to be any wind, a lot of wind, or a little wind on the day of your wedding. So you must plan for to have a lot of wind, just in case. You'd rather be safe than sorry, right? You may even want some kind of aisle weight if you're having your wedding inside just to prevent, you know, the, the wind coming in through the opening and closing of the door, your guests walking by from flipping up a corner. Totally up to you, though. Um, if you're having your wedding outside, generally, most places, you're just going to get a, um, like a tent stake and stake it down the corners and along the, um you know, sides at a few places to hold your aisle runner down. However, some locations, such as parks, historical locations, may not allow you to actually put anything in the ground. So you're going to have to weight your aisle runner rather than staking it in place. If you can stake your aisle runner in place, um, a cheaper alternative to tent stakes would be paper clips. Now you're going to want a bigger paper clip than this, you know, one of the little larger ones. This is just, you know, a tiny paper clip. But you can just get your larger paper clips, unravel them, straighten them out, but leave a hook at one end. Push the, um, yeah, push the one end, the straight end, into the ground. And then take your hook. And you want to push this into the ground so that the hook is facing inward towards your aisle runner. You want it to be facing towards your aisle runner, not away from your aisle runner. I'm using this as my aisle runner, by the way, for this demonstration. So you want the hook facing in towards your aisle runner so that it actually lays over top of the aisle runner. And then try to, you should be able to do with this most aisle runners, depending what it's made out of, how thick it is, and how much space there is between the weaving of the aisle runner. But try to take that point or that tip of the hook and actually poke it through the aisle runner and push it, push it as far in as you can. That way it's through. You got maybe double points um, connecting with the ground and then you have a full loop actually on the top of your aisle runner. This is going to hold it really well. The wind's not going to be taking it up. The wind is going to have to physically rip your aisle runner off of the paper clips in order for it to go anywhere. So um, I do suggest the PVC or plastic coated paper clips just so it doesn't hurt your hand as much trying to get it in the ground. You may want to bring a little hammer or a rubber mallet to help get them in the ground depending on um, what the ground is like during the season of your wedding. You can get paper clips in packs of like all silver. I've seen them in all gold. I've seen them in all white. I've seen them in all black. You can get them in multicolored and just pick out the color you want. So you should be able to find a color and style of paper clip that matches your aisle runner pretty well, so it'll be virtually invisible. Um, but like I said, if you can't put anything in the ground, then you have to weight your aisle runner. There's two ways to do that. You either put weights under the aisle runner which unfortunately will create a little bit of a bump or a lump in the aisle runner where the weight is. So it'll be very visible. Um, you could do either rocks or sand tied together in a bag or some sort and then sew that or glue that to your aisle runner. This means also packing up the aisle runner with that kind of thing attached. is It's going to be very awkward. You can't just roll it up and then unroll it the day of. So keep that in mind, and it's going to create a pretty sizable lump in your aisle runner if you do that. You could get disc-shaped weights, which is what I would suggest if you're doing um, weights underneath the aisle runner. Um, but they're usually just black or silver weighted discs made of lead, I think is what they're made out of, some kind of metal. Um, and they come in different sizes, and one that's really heavy is relatively small. So it's pretty good, and then you can just glue those to your underside corners and along the edge of your, of your aisle runner and just use crazy glue. 
that'll hold it pretty good and then you can still roll up your aisle runner for storage and just unroll it the day of. So that would be very convenient. It is going to make a little bit of a lump or a bump where it, those weights are attached underneath the aisle runner, but it's not going to be horribly visible unless you get thick, tall weights. So the other option, if you don't want to put the weights underneath, is to put them on top. This is generally going to be the cheaper option, but because they're on top, they're visible to all your guests, so you want them to be very decorative. Now the good news is, it becomes a decoration that also serves a function, so that's good, especially if you're trying to save some money. Um, so what, what I did, is I just bought this little container here, it's just a little food storage container. This is a 3.6 fluid ounce container, which is the kind of container you would use to put salad dressing in to keep it on the side when you, if you take a salad to work. And you can find these containers in different sizes. You can get them in square or round typically. I've seen them with a bunch of different colored lids, uh, black, white, dark blue, hot pink. So you should be able to find um, the kind of container you like with a colored lid that matches your theme. However, if you can't, don't worry, you can always paint over the lid or just cover it up with fabric. So the color of the lid can be fixed. It's, it's not a big deal, so don't, don't stress about it. But then for me, I just glued these little silk red lilies on the top, and it's just glued in there with some hot glue. I just put a dab on the lid where I wanted the lily, put the lily's back stem into the glue, the hot glue, let it cool a bit, and then put more, layered more glue atop of that around the stem to give it a really good hold and then just let it sit and, and cure for a very long time. And then to hide the sand, because my, my fiance didn't like the sand, he thought it was too beachy, I actually glued lace around the side of my container, which makes it look more formal. It hides the sand so it doesn't, doesn't look so beachy for us, and it makes it a little bit more um, modern Victorian. So we got a lot of lace in our wedding, so that this worked great for me. Um, and the story about the lilies is I really wanted dark red lilies, but they were real ones were too expensive for me to have even in my bridal bouquet. Uh, yet alone to have for my bridesmaids. So in order to save money, I compromised to getting the red silk ones and just using them on the weight so I can still have my lilies but stay within my budget. So like I said, I mentioned this is sand that is in my container. It's just a basic tan sand like you'd see in the sandbox. And you can get it in large bags of it at any garden center or home improvement shop pretty cheap. I believe you can also find um, white colored sand perhaps at these places. It'd be a little bit more expensive, but I think you might be able to find it in a big bag. Um, if you don't mind spending a little bit more money for the extra pretty factor, you can go to a craft store and actually get colored sand for sand art and other kinds of crafts. There's usually even some colored sand in the wedding section at wedding boutiques for doing Unity sand containers. Like I said, it's colored, it's going to be more expensive, and it's going to come in smaller containers, but if you really want it and it's within your budget, go for it. You can get it in any color you want to match your theme. You could even take your two or three colors that you have for your wedding color scheme and layer them. Get like a striping layered effect, so you could do black and white zebra stripes if you wanted with sand. Really cool. Um, if you do do a layer, layer colors of sand, don't be you know, shaking it around, be very careful to keep it upright and from getting banged around and shook as much as possible in storage and setup. Otherwise, you're going to lose the effect and it's going to look horrible. Just warning you. Some other options for filling your containers would be gravel. This is just, this is purple colored aquarium gravel that I used in here. And this is going to, a gravel is going to be add a little bit more weight to your container than using sand would. So if you need something really heavy, because you got a really heavy or, you know, it's really windy in your area, usually go for gravel. But you can get it all kinds of different colors. You can, again, you can take multi, two different colors and just mix them together. 
Um, if you want to incorporate both colors to your theme, uh, you could do one color gravel and then your other color for your scheme as your lid color if you wanted. You won't be able to layer, I don't think, colors and get the striping effect like I said about doing with sand. You're going to just have to mix them up like 50-50 if you want to do two colors of gravel. Um, aquarium gravel, the biggest size bag I have seen is five pounds. And that will cost you anywhere from about eight to $24 usually depending on the brand, the color, and just generally the prices in your area and the shop where you go to get it. Uh, if you're look, you want to use gravel, you like the look of gravel, you need the extra weight, but you want something cheaper, you can go again to a garden center or a home improvement shop and get gardening gravel. Uh, you know, gravel for doing gardens and paving um, under roads with. Um, get your basic gray stuff. It's really cheap, not that pretty, but garden centers will also have bags of gravel that's pure white. Very simple for any wedding and any color scheme to just get the all white. You can also find it in just your very naturalistic brown tan mix, something that looks like river petals, um, pebbles, which would be really good if you're having a nature themed wedding or um, like a rustic style wedding. It'd be great for that. You might be able to find black gravel. Um, I'm not sure about that though as far as at a garden center, so that's the idea. Um, a few other things, I had some tumbled stones, so these are actually polished stones. They have different patterns and come in different colors, all in a mixed bag. Don't know where to tell you to go for this, and it'll probably be expensive, but hey, though I throw it out there. If you're doing a really fun, um, informal wedding, maybe multicolored, you could get glass marbles. You can get these in bulk, pretty cheap. Um, you can get these at craft stores and toy shops. They're all over the place during the summer usually, but unfortunately they normally only come in rainbow colored packs. So, I mean, if you want all blue ones, you're going to have to spend a lot of extra money and just pick out all the blue ones. Um, another thing you can do is get glass um, accent stones or craft stones. And you can get these at craft shops. You can find these a lot um, with the vases and candles in regular department stores. You can buy them in bulk online. And it comes in all kinds of different colors and styles. You're sure to find something that's going to work. Um, I here have um, transparent colored ones. I have opaque colored ones. I have ones that are clear colored but they're frosted. Um, I've even seen some that were actually a swirl of color so they were marbly. So there's a lot of different things you can get um, that are that are out there. And these are glass so they are going to add um, a pretty good amount of weight to your container. But they aren't going to pack together as tightly as something that's smaller in size like grains of sand or you know, small pieces of gravel, so you're going to get less than a thing, but weight-wise, I think they're going to be about even, not sure though. Um, when you are um, choosing your, your fillers, I mean, what you choose, and if you're doing one color or multiple, it's up to you, and it's going to be up to your budget, but I do highly suggest using two colors or using a hue. Uh, the hue of the same color. So instead of doing just all purple, do dark purple and lavender all together in one. It's much more appealing to the eye than doing just all purple. Um, like here, I did the green, the opaque green and the clear green. And you can see they're different shades. This one's minty and this one's more green green. I threw in white because, hey, it's a wedding. Even if your colors are hot pink and lime green, if you throw in the occasional bit of white or ivory, it's a wedding. You know, it, nobody's really going to care. And if for some reason you can't find enough quantity in the color or colors you want of glass stones, you can always just throw in clear ones um, to make up the volume that you need to fill your container. 
because they're clear, so they're not going to take away from your color scheme, and you're still going to see your other colored stones right through them. So you can add it to any color scheme and not have to worry about it. Um, you can barely tell in here. And again, there's, there's a side view of the mix. Um, you could even just do mix the styles like I did here. Same color, but mix the opaque and the frosted and the clear all together to get something that's more visually rounded, more visually appealing than just a flat, straight one color. Okay, so now moving on to choosing your style of container, you want to pick something that's the right size, that once you fill it, it's going to be heavy enough to hold down your particular aisle runner. The lighter material your aisle runner is, the less weight you're really going to need, um, but the more of them you may need. Um, I'm, not, I'm not really positive. Just go with whatever looks pretty, I guess. Um, could always be a good, a good thing. Um, but do keep in mind, on the ends, your, your ends, your corners, so the very most ends at either the front and, front and start and end of your aisle runner, you're going to want your largest, biggest, heaviest weights. And then you can put smaller weights in between along the edges to prevent the wind from just, you know, getting up underneath your aisle runner and taking it away or knocking you off your feet if you're wearing heels like I am. And that's what this is. This is going down the middle. These are not my end weights. My end weights are actually glass and they're a little bit bigger than this, round and taller and, and very heavy. But, so keep that in mind with the largest, biggest weights on your corners on the ends. Now the style container is really up to you. I do highly suggest glass containers over plastic ones because glass ones are automatic heavier. So you get automatically more weight before you even start filling it. So they're gonna be heavier than anything plastic no matter what you put in it. So I suggest glass. Keep in mind though, that also means when you're moving them, taking them to the venue, setting them up, storing them, whatever, you're going to have to pad them really well to prevent them from getting broken versus something like this, you just stack them up like this, stick them in a bag and go because you don't have to worry about breaking. So keep that in mind when you are choosing your style of container. Um, there's your advantages to having um, a tall container, something that's more tall than wide is that it's not going to take up walking space. It's not going to jut out into the aisle in your path. It's going to reduce the chance of you or your guests tripping over it. And you also have the option, the decorative option of putting decorative things inside that container. And because it's tall, you can fill it up with your weight, leave a little space, put in a bunch of decorative things, and your guests are going to see it. You can't really do that with something that's wide and flat because they're never going to see it. I mean, this is going to be on the ground, so you're mostly going to be seeing the top of the containers most of the time. Um, but something that is flat, if it's square, like I said again, it's going to take from the walking space more. But if it's more rectangular shaped, like a phone, that it's long but not as wide, you can actually put it along your edge, parallel to the edge of your aisle runner, and have a greater point of contact and greater point of weight, which is going to be more secure than if you use something round, which is one point of contact. But something like this is going to, you know, it's going to jut out more. So just keep that in mind when picking your, your style of shape. Um, you can get plastic containers anywhere. You can get ones that are crystal clear, like this. You can get ones that are see-through, but they're not super clear. I mean, you can see what's in them. You can see the colors, but it's not like looking through the window. You can get ones that are actually distorted, um, 
you know, they're textured, so they're distorted. You can get ones that are actually frosted, that, you know, they look like they have frost on them and you can't really see what's in them at all. You can make frosted ones yourself, you know, paint them if you, if you had wanted. Um, and uh, another great suggestion, something I've seen done a lot, if you're doing a vintage, rustic, or country-themed wedding, mason jars make perfect aisle runner weights. Fill them up and decorate them. Um, now, I just wanted to give you some decorating ideas too. Um, some other things that I came up with that you can actually do with these just to give you some ideas. And I will try to find a good Pinterest page to link um, at the bottom of the video to help um, inspire you as well and to give you a better idea what I'm talking about. Um, but, like in this case, I did lace to do the vintage look around the outside. If you're having a beach or nautical themed wedding, you can uh, get a tall container, fill it mostly with sand, and then you can actually put inside of it little miniature shells, mini fish, mini, you know, starfish and captain's wheels. You can glue, um, if you go for more of the flat container, you could glue seashells and starfish and captain wheels to the outside. You can wrap the outside of your containers or your lid with fish netting for a beach kind of theme. Um, or glue, you know, wheels on the top, even. You could use, um, you could even maybe seaweed, like plastic seaweed or silk seaweed to the outside. I'm not so sure on that one, but I, I've definitely seen it done with the fish netting a lot for beach themed, themed weddings with similar kind of decor. If you're doing a woodsy, naturalistic themed wedding, you can use uh, gravel would probably be your best bet using actual stones or gravel. And then you could glue moss to the top side of your containers. You could put moss and sticks inside your container if you use a tall container. Um, so that's something. Other things that you could glue on the tops of your containers, you could do various flowers. You could do um, just like leaf, like greenery, and just have those draping down the side. Um, vines of ivory just cascading over a container for a woodsy wedding or even a, like a Victorian themed wedding would be very lovely. But you could also put bows, like ribbons. On the top of your container, um, you could take for a country, um, a country themed wedding, if you're doing country or rustic theme, you can put little um, burlap bows, you can make bows out of burlap on the outside of your containers or your mason jars, you can cover the lids with with burlap, um, so that's, that's another option for you as well. Um, Trying to think if there's anything that I didn't cover, but I, I think that's that's pretty much it. So if you have any questions, just just ask me, okay? You have fun crafting, enjoy, and please do not copy the exact thing that I did for my wedding. Would you want anyone copying you? Probably not. Nobody really does, but you can get inspiration, do similar things, but don't copy. Don't do anything exactly like this. All right. I'll see you some other time, YouTube. Stay tuned.